Okay, people. So I um yeah, I decided to check out Smile. Right? This is the feature directorial effort from Parker Finn, and it was blowing up, blowing up last year. You know what I mean? He wrote, he directed it. Um, the film is produced by Matt Marty Bowen, right? White Godfrey, Isaac Klausner, and Robert Solano. It's executive produced by Adam Fishback. Cristobal Tapia de Vue handled the music. Charlie Saroff, cinematography. Elliot Greenberg edited the piece. Monica Mickelson, she's on casting. Lester Cohen, production design. Art decoration is Larry W. Brown. Set decoration, we have Thomas Brady and Sheila Bock. Costume design, Alexis Forte. And our cast. Well, people. Uh, Rose, Rose Cotter, is played by Susie Bacon. Her fiancé, Trevor, is played by Jesse T. Usher. Her former partner, Joel, is played by Kyle Gauner. Um, we have got... Um, ooh, is that a sister? God damn it. It's hard to remember sometimes, people. I forget a lot of shit. Um, yeah, I think Holly is her sister. And that, and she is played by Gillian Zinza. Her mother is played by Dora Kiss. Um, and Kevin Kepi. Uh, we have got do, 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 Dr. Madeline Northcott, played by Robin Weigert. Uh, we've got her. Um, her boss, right? Her boss, who is Dr. Morgan Desi, played by Cal Penn, who I didn't know would come back to acting. You know what I mean? Because he went off into politics, didn't he? So, uh, yeah, he's back. Uh, we got Robert Talley, played by Rob Morgan. Um, Victoria Munez, played by Judy Reyes. Kyle Rankin, played by Jack Shockett. Greg is played by Nick Arapaluk. Um, Detective Buckley is played by Perry Strong. Uh, Stephanie is played by Sarah Kapner. Um, yeah, I would say that is um, Jack. Oh, Jackson, her sister's kid, is played by Matthew Lamb. Um, oh, 10 year old Rose is played by Megan Brown Pratt. Um, <coughs> yeah, I believe. Mm, oh, the weird creature thing is played by Marty Matulus. Mm, I may have pronounced that incorrectly, but uh, yes, now. The gist is this. After witnessing a bizarre traumatic incident involving a patient, Dr. Rose Cotter starts experiencing frightening occurrences that she can't explain. As an overwhelming terror begins taking over her life, Rose must confront her troubling past in order to survive and escape her horrifying new reality. Right. So, as I said, man, this film was all over the place. Everyone was talking about Smile. The poster's creepy as fuck. Right. They, um, yeah, they employed people. Right. Which is crazy smart. 
that they employed people to go to public places, public events, and just stand there with a fucking huge smile on their faces, looking mad creepy, which is, is kind of ingenious, you know what I mean? Kind of ingenious, and it got, it got everyone talking about it. So, you know, it just popped onto now. So I was like, all right, you know what? I'm going to give this a look. Even though, you know, I don't always necessarily want to do a horror. I was like, yo, let me check it. I wasn't, I had no clue what the plot was, you know, with most cases. So, yeah, I was um, interested to see how this got into things. So, I guess, you know, using that framing device of a therapist and just the way it did unfold, it was like, okay, all right, this is interesting. This is intriguing, you know? Um, The thing that did have me questioning stuff, right? Well, I mean, firstly, yeah... I think when you see therapists on TV shows and in films, a lot of times they are doing things that therapists will not do, right? They're mad inappropriate with the way they, you know, get talking to people, right? It's like, yo, what are they doing? You know what I mean? Like, real therapists don't do that shit. But anyway, I once... Like, she had talk, spoken to this girl, Laura, right? She'd spoken to this girl. Oh, did I tell you who Laura was? Laura is played by Catelyn Stacy, right? Oh, and this, this film is based on a short film that um, Parker did in 2020, right? Called Laura Can't Sleep. Um... And, uh, yeah, some of the people from the short came into the uh, the main feature, like Laura did. But, yeah, you've got a therapist, you know what I mean? So you kind of think that there is a rationale behind the way she thinks, right? A way to compartmentalize situations. Right, put aside horrific thoughts. Because this is the thing, a therapist is hearing so much craziness from people on a regular basis. Like, so much. Do you think a normal person is just going to be flatlined by it all? But they persevere. So you think, all right, they'll be able to deal with this shit, right? But, yeah. Like, she does things and goes about things, which you just be like, but that makes no sense. You know what I mean? Like, you know, from your work, people will not believe if you approach it in a certain way. Right? So, I found that that was hard to reconcile with. Right? The behavior. And as I said, this is the thing. Because she's a therapist, because she's dealing and used to dealing with a whole heap of things, you think that she could handle this a bit better? Now, obviously, right? I mean, there's certain things that will always freak us out. And, and I imagine this, yeah? Do you know what I mean? Don't get me wrong. I will not want this shit. But just as a device, that's how you'd think, right, because it, because, you know, it kind of doesn't matter if she's a therapist, essentially, with the way it all goes, right, she could just be regular Jane working in a coffee shop, right, a barista, right, she could stack shelves, it wouldn't really matter, so there was that, now, I thought the the suspense, the intrigue, man, that was creepy, that really did well, really did well, like the dreams and all of this kind of, just the waking visions, all of that, man, 
the effects effects were great effects are great the way they they you know those scenes sometimes slow down and just the pacing of those elements really done well and for like a first feature yeah solid solid some of it like the build up to things felt long it did feel long in places and right she's engaged to trevor but we don't really get much of the relationship to understand what it is because with the way everything unfolds you question if they're even in a relate you know what i mean there's a lot of things which make you go huh but why though right the joe situation you kind of question a little bit right there's a, just a few things that are going down that don't necessarily feel like they're what they're meant to be and that's not in a oh are they giving us a red herring here? No, it's just like it doesn't really feel like it's like a couple who are engaged, right? The ex, why? Because from the sounds of it, it didn't end necessarily well. So again, you're just like, what's going on here? You know, it's just stuff like that. And, you know, I think it's just... Yeah, it, it's just hard to buy some of those things, right? And then especially, there's bits where, okay, in a situation where you see something might go down, surely you're trying to stop it, especially when you're those people, you know? And I'm talking about there's a bit at the end where you're just like, now, nah. you could see what's happening before... It went further. So you're thinking in that position, knowing what that person is, you'd think they would do something, right? Because this can't be their first rodeo, right? So that was all a bit baffling, but it does open things up for potential more. And, you know, they have announced that there will be a sequel. So, you know. It, it does feed that with the ending and everything like that. So I thought this was suspenseful. Right? Those elements did work well. Did work really well. But the, the sinew of the piece, right, the connective tissue, I thought that was a little bit clunky in places. Now, this could very well be because this mm, is it's, it's not necessarily my favorite genre, right? Now, there's definitely been stuff I've watched and I've been, oh, that was really good, right? But I think yeah, it does make you a bit more critical over stuff. Right, and it needs something special to draw me in, you know. So there, there, yeah, there is that. Like we see an incident at the beginning with young Laura, well, uh, young Rose, right, which kind of leads you to understand some of the trauma she may be under. But again, going into the depression she's gone into. You, you would assume there's coping mechanisms and, and ways that she's now used to get around these things and deal with things operate, right? Which we just don't really see. Also, for someone that's probably not slept, doesn't look crazy, doesn't look as fucked up, as you would be, you know what I mean, I'm like, sure, you should look a lot worse than she is, right, so, the, yeah, there's a few things, right, I can definitely see why this was a big thing, and I think if you are into that genre, like, friend Sarah, 
I imagine she probably loved this. I think she might have seen it and told me she loves this. But I feel it's one of, it's the type of film she'd be down with. But she is big on the horror. So, yeah, I think if that's you, then I think this could work very well. You know, I think um, it's, oh, my days. What did I think it was a bit similar to, kind of, themically? Um, I think, like, uh, bar no, Clock. That's it, Clock. We spoke about it a few weeks back. On It's on Hulu in the States, Disney Plus, Stars, Banner, anywhere else. And that's this psychological thing. But that one worked a bit, that worked a lot better for me, actually. Because you, it, you could see the rationale in how everything unfolded, right? This one, yeah, smile. It didn't hit me the same, but I think if you like clock, yeah, smile. You know what I mean? That, 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 that could potentially be you. All right. So it's out everywhere right now. You can watch on Amazon now. You know, links on the website, people. But yeah, finally saw smile. And that's what I thought. You know what I mean? Just my thoughts, baby. Just my thoughts.